as a black person who is trans, how do I feel about the recent attempted assassination on former President Donald Trump? Well, let me tell you. But before we get started, please remember to like the video and to leave some comments. Thank you. So we've all saw the video of the recent attempted assassination on former President Donald J. Trump, which occurred last Saturday, just a few days ago. I'd never thought that they would go to such great lengths to prevent Donald Trump from being reelected. I thought with the weaponization of the DOJ and I believe the 91 charges against him was the final attempt, was the final straw. And from here on out, they would just run a fair and safe election. But I was wrong, apparently. You never truly know what people are capable of doing just to get their way. So I get a call from my mother that afternoon. I had all of the TVs off. My phone was away from me. I was doing something else. I was unplugged for the most part. And she asked me if I had heard or seen what had taken place at the Trump rally and that someone tried to assassinate Donald Trump. I told her, no, I have not heard or saw anything. But I asked my mother if he was okay and if anyone had been hurt. So I walk up front and I turn on the TV, I open YouTube, and sure enough, there are several channels live streaming what had taken place. So I opened one of the live streams. I can't remember which one. And by that time, I think it was maybe 15 or 20 minutes after the attempted assassination had happened. So I knew I had to rewind the video in order to see what had taken place. So I had to brace myself. So I was able to go back in the video and see what actually happened. There were shots ringing out and I saw Donald Trump do this and duck. Even though I'm not a major Trump supporter, I'm definitely not a supporter of Joe Biden. I nearly cried when I heard those shots ring out and I saw Donald Trump do this and hit the ground. That was such a sad thing to see. I can't imagine how I would have reacted had I seen it actually taking place on live TV. She said that Donald Trump seems to be okay, and she isn't sure if anyone was hurt. This was still several minutes after the attempted assassination. I felt bad for Donald Trump, and I felt bad for the people in attendance at this rally in Pennsylvania. A lot of them turned out for this rally because they wanted to support Donald Trump, and they felt as though they were in a safe and secure environment, and they were not expecting the unthinkable to happen. When I saw Secret Service running up to the stage and covering Donald Trump, and right before that, he falls to the ground, I wasn't sure if he collapsed or if he had passed out after losing a lot of blood. I didn't know if he was going to make it, really. It was... A sad thing to see, regardless of where you stand politically. But there were several people on social media upset because the attempt to assassinate former President Donald Trump was not successful. And have you any humanity if you were thinking that? Whether or not you like Donald Trump, why would you want someone to lose their life like that? regardless of whether or not you like them. I can't understand that. There is no one that I would wish death on, even if I dislike them or disagree with them politically. But once everything was clear, Secret Service and Donald Trump stood up to exit the stage, and Donald Trump starts giving the fight sign, the fight symbol, signaling everyone to keep fighting. That was such an iconic thing to see. He was doing that while bleeding after the bullet had grazed his ear. And had he not turned his head, that would have been it. 
But by the grace of God, he turned his head at the right time, and the bullet only grazed his ear. Thankfully. But I had never seen anything like that before happen in my lifetime. When Ronald Reagan was shot back in 1981, that happened a few months before I was born, so I have no memory of when that took place. But as the crowd was chanting USA, USA, and Donald Trump, along with Secret Service, and he's, you know, giving the fight sign with his fist, giving the fight symbol. Even though you may not agree with Donald Trump politically, you may not even like him. That was such an iconic thing to see. And it made you feel proud. You know, you have someone here, whether or not you like Donald Trump, who is telling everyone to continue to fight for what's right, for what you believe in, regardless of what the opposition may throw at you. That really says a lot to me. But sadly, there was one person who attended the rally who lost their life, a guy by the name of Corey Comtori, I think that's how you pronounce his name. But he was a firefighter, and once the shots began to ring out, he covered his family, shielding them, protecting his family to keep them safe. And because of that, he lost his life. You know, all of this feminism stuff that they're putting out there where women don't need men, all men are bad, all men are dogs. That isn't entirely true. And the truth is, we all need each other. Women need men, men need women. We all need each other. But he died a hero protecting his family. It's sad that he lost his life. He had no idea that, or even his family had no idea that something as horrible as that would occur. While they're assuming that they're in a safe and secure environment. But Secret Service, it sounds like there was a problem with how they were carrying out their jobs. And the shooter was identified as 20-year-old Matthew Crooks, who is a 20-year-old. And he's a 20-year-old man. He is not a 20-year-old kid. There were some news outlets calling him a kid. But if you're at least 18, then you are legally an adult. But Secret Service had no choice but to end his life in order to keep everyone else safe and for him to cease fire. There was a school picture of the shooter that they were showing. The first one I think they released, he looked quite young in that picture, maybe around age 14 or 15. Maybe this was a picture from a few years ago. And there was also a rumor that he had explosives in his car. One of the news outlets there interviewed a guy who was just outside the rally who witnessed the shooter climbing the building and bear crawling on the roof. I think they said that he had a ladder too, but they noticed that he had a rifle. And he tried to notify Secret Service and law enforcement that there was a guy here climbing onto the roof with a rifle. I think you should investigate this immediately. But they didn't do anything. I don't know if it was because they misunderstood him. They couldn't make out what he was saying, but... I heard that this was about half an hour before the attempted assassination happened. But I heard that one of the police officers climbed up to the top of the building and the shooter saw him and pointed the rifle at him. And the officer immediately retreated after that. But what I'm trying to say is it seems like this could have been prevented had Secret Service been better prepared and if law enforcement had immediately taken action and tried to stop this guy from doing what he did. But instead, they did not act on the notification that there was a threat here. And how was he able to get that close to an event with a former president? I think they said he was about 200 or... 
maybe 400 yards from where the rally was or from where Donald Trump was. And there are also a lot of people saying that this could have been an inside job. And if it were, it wouldn't surprise me at all. You know, this was probably their final attempt to eliminate Donald Trump from running for re-election. But if Trump is such a bad person, and because he's running against the Democrats, you might as well say, because he is, it's going to be Democrat versus Republican. No offense to the other candidates, but it seemed like an act of desperation. Maybe he was hired by an organization or an agency to do this. He wasn't trained as a sniper. I don't think he was because there were snipers saying that they could have easily carried out something like this and actually succeeded easily just from their training. So he was seemed like an amateur. He seemed like someone who didn't know a lot about target practice. But he knew enough to cause harm. I don't know, really. There's a lot here that still needs to be investigated, but is it going to be a reliable investigation? Is this going to be something that is actually truthful? Or is it going to be something that is fabricated in order to make it look as though this happened, regardless of what the truth is. But everyone deserves to know the truth. We should be told the truth and not lied to about any of this or have information withheld from us knowing about. Some people think that this attempted assassination was staged. I don't think so. Why would anyone, a former president included, put their life on the line and the lives of other people attending their event on the line in order to stage something like this and actually get injured in the process. Trump didn't appear to be nervous or anticipating something to happen at any minute, but some people are saying that the shooter was hired by an agency or an organization, and this could very well be true. We know that they have gone to such great lengths to prevent Donald Trump from being reelected. Who's to say that this was their last desperate attempt? For nearly a decade now, they have gone to such lengths to demonize, to discredit Donald Trump. And why is that? Once again, I don't think that Trump is a perfect guy. No, he's not. But the truth is that it's because they don't want someone like Donald Trump to run this country. They would rather have a Barack Obama, Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton, Ronald Reagan, George Bush, Joe Biden in office, your typical politician. Trump is not a typical politician. He's more of a businessman and he's kind of a disruptor in a lot of ways. And that's not what they want. They want someone that can be controlled by the interests of the party and whoever else is running the show. Because we know that there are other people working behind the scenes who are possibly trying to further their agenda in order to have their way and have things function as they want them to. Instead of allowing people to be free and to think free, to think for themselves, in other words, and allow a real, true democracy. But they've spent millions of our tax dollars trying to eliminate Donald Trump. How does that make you feel? Are you bothered by that? Couldn't that money have been used for something else to help people who are in need of help? But they'd rather select someone that we can vote for as opposed to letting us choose who we want to vote for. But this was their final act of desperation. And a lot of people have woken up now, too. And they're not having it. 
Maybe the shooter did act alone. Maybe he didn't. I don't know. But in spite of their best efforts to eliminate Donald Trump from becoming president again, all it did was allow more of us to see things for what they really are. And to see what how desperate they are to take down this guy because he's a threat. What do you do to a threat? You neutralize the threat, right? But this has only helped Donald Trump. It really has. His approval rating has gone up a lot. I don't agree with Donald Trump on everything. In Project 2025, they're saying that Donald Trump supports Project 2025. I could do a separate video on that as well, but based on what I know of Project 2025 right now, there are some things in there that I disagree on, but there are some things in there that aren't half bad, but Project 2025, it's not something that Donald Trump authored or the Re Republicans, the Republican Party, but rather it was authored by the Heritage Organization. I think the Heritage Foundation, which is a conservative, um, I believe they're lobbyists, and they're trying to lobby for some because they know that they cannot get all of what's in Project 2025. It's a 900 plus page document passed into law. That's not going to happen. So don't let them scare you about Project 2025. Chances are a lot of what's in Project 2025 is not going to become law. So there's really no need to worry. That's how I feel, at least. But it seems like Secret Service and law enforcement as well cut a lot of corners which caused this to happen. Had they had the proper security controls or people in proper places to prevent this, this would not have occurred. There's a lot that isn't adding up right now. But if you're one of those people who haven't already, I think you should put party aside and see things for what they really are. Don't believe everything that you see on social media or hear on social media, see on the news or hear on the news. Rather, have your own thoughts about things and see things for what they are. I know it hurts and it's hard to take at times, but it's better you know the truth than live a lie. Don't swear on every word that mainstream media says, even on social media. Just because someone has a large following doesn't mean that they're giving you the truth. A lot of them, there are organizations that are funding them and in control of the information that they're giving you. And they're compensated for that. Very well compensated. So more evidence is going to continue coming out about this story. But I'm thankful that Donald Trump wasn't assassinated. It's sad that one guy did lose his life and I think there were some other injuries as well, but we have to do better. We need better security. There were women, a lot of women Secret Service agents, and I'm not saying that women cannot work in law enforcement or defense, but it seemed like just looking at the photographs and the videos that they were unprepared in a lot of ways. And had they been better prepared, this would not have happened. So please remember to comment and like the video. Our time is now. Let's change the world.